He says, the testimony of falsehood. False testimony. Call Allah Ta'ala, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورِ Allah says, speaking about the description of His chosen slaves, وَعِبَادُ Rahman, And from them, from those characteristics, He says, and those who do not partake in shahadat al-zur, false testimonies. False testimonies. This is very from Surah Al-Furqan. Clearly proves that this isn't the way of the believers. It isn't from the way of the slaves of Rahman. However, the verse is, isn't directly to the point showing it that it's something that can bad. This verse isn't direct, isn't frank. The Dilala from the ayah is not right to the point saying that it's a major sin. Something that the Ibad Rahman don't do does not necessitate that it's from the what? Major sins. Everybody understand this? It doesn't necessitate that. Everybody understand this? It says good, what? Good students never think like this. Ever. Never say that again. That doesn't prove that that thing is what? Is of severe, yani, yani grave, yani, severity. Severe, grave, severity. No. Uh-huh. Doesn't necessarily mean that. It could be. But it doesn't what? Necessitate it. It doesn't what? Necessitate it. He then says, وَفِي الْأَثَارِ عَدَلَتْ شَهَدَتْ الزُّورِ بِالْإِشْرَاكِ بِاللَّهِ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فَجْتَنِي بُوَجِزْتَ مِنْ الْأَوْثَانِ وَجْتَنِي بُوَقَوْلَ الزُّورِ He says here, the uh, hadith number 135, or Athar, at least narration number 135, whether it's a hadith or not, Al-Muhim is in Athar. He says that the shahadat al-zur, the false testimony, has been paired. It's been paired with shirk of Allah. Hmm? It's been like a sister vice. Allah says, So avoid the filth of idols. Avoid the filth of those idols. And avoid the statement of what? Of zur. Avoid the statement of or the testimony of falsehood bearing witness to something which is totally wrong and incorrupt. Everybody throw in this. So Allah Azza wa he mentioned to, he said to avoid what? Shirk. Then after that came? Everybody understand this? Khairan insha'Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ba'athir rahimahullah. He then mentions another hadith. Speaking on this issue, hmm. number one thirty six, he says, Mufil Hadith al Thabit, La Tazur, Kadama, Shahidi, Zuri, Yaman Kiamati, Hatta, Tajibola, no. On the day of judgment, the two feet, he says, the feet of one who gives witness to falsehood, to something which is totally wrong and incorrect, his feet will not go, he will not pass until the hellfire becomes wedged for him. It's a must for him to go to hell. He won't move, he won't change his station. Until he is what demanded and requested for the fire. And the Dhahabi rahimahullah says that that hadith is thabit, is authentic. Qultu shahid zuri qad irtakaba adha'ima. He now expounds on why shahadat al zuri is so bad, why it's so terrible and formidable. And the one who makes the testimony, he says he is found to all types of adha'ima. Uh, mm. Major problems. Number one, أحدها الكذب والافتراء. والله تعالى يقول إن الله لا يهدي من هو مصرف كذاب. 
The first is just plain lying. Lying. Allah the Exalted he says, surely Allah does not guide those who are, he says, musrif, extravagant. Hmm, Sharif? Those who are extravagant and wasteful, Allah does not guide them. Because that liars. Hadith number 137, with the hadith, yutba'u al ala kulli shayin laysa wal kadib. Hadith number 137 that we already read, he said that the believer could be prone to doing something except for treachery and lying. This is something that the believer just doesn't fall into. Being a kathab and being a backstabber. Allah help us all. Some people today, they take backstabbing as their normal everyday practice. It's, it's idi. It's nothing for me to stab you in your back. Smile on your face, stab you in your back. Praise you, then dis, uh, dispraise you. Promise you and break my promise with a dagger right in your back, unfortunately. And they have the nerve to speak about Islam, Sunnah, way of the Salaf, knowledge, Ahl Sunnah, Ahl Hadith, and they're treacherous people. Everybody understand this? It's very unfortunate. Treachery is not the way of those who have Iman. Wathaniha, he says in the second problem, Anahu Vulam and Ladi Shuhida Ali, Hata Ukhidash Bishahadatihi, Maluhu, Elduhu, Waruhu. Is that the one upon whom he bears witness, he gives testimony against? Hmm? He says his wealth will be taken, his honor will be defamed, and his blood could be spilt, his soul could be lost because of him being a witness. So not only is he himself lying, but he's now harming others. Everybody understand this? The man, I, yes, I saw him making zina, yeah. I saw him drinking, I saw him doing this. Now they attack his honor. He's a facet. Yeah, he said it. He said it. Nah, uh huh? Bilal? He said it. And the Sheikh refutes him. And calls him an innovator. His honor is now what? Been defamed. And the person actually didn't what? Didn't say it. Nah, nah, he said it. Sheikh, he said it. We heard him say it. Oh, he meant this. Shadid Zul. Yes, he did the crime. Now he's going to be put to death. Death penalty, this and that, because of false testimony. Number three. He says here, He says here, He says here, He's even oppressed the one for whom he's testifying. The one for whom you bear witness, you're oppressing him as well. And that is because he now has haram wealth. And once he takes that haram wealth, it's going to hell. It's going to burn. So it's actually like you're feeding your brother some fire. Fuck up. Bismillah. Eat it. You're actually putting your brother in the fire of hell. You're putting your brother at risk for Allah's anger and Allah's wrath. And that's also good. I right, understand this. You're oppressing your brother as well. So just look at those three things right there. To lie, that's enough. To oppress someone, that's enough. Muslim or not. And also to oppress a third. And just look at how things work out for wrongdoing. You think that you're getting away. You think that you're making out all right. But in actuality, you're making things worse for your own soul. You're making things what? Worse for your own soul. And the prophet tells us to help our brothers, whether they are wrongdoers or whether they are being wronged. Support your brother. Help your brother. Everybody understand this? Be a brother to your brother. And sometimes by him eating the haram, you have to be a brother to say, Akhi, you can't do that. Get out my face. What are you trying to say? Akhi, I'm your brother. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm your brother for the sake of Allah. And I'm telling you that you eating this wealth is haram. Everybody understand this. Many people think giving their brother haram things is a good thing. A friend. We go drink. Let's have a drink. That's bad. You're helping your brother upon sharr, upon evil. So there's no good in it. Adhahabi rahim Allah even says, Hadith number 138, وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ مَنْ مَالٍ أَوْ بِمِنْ مَالِ أَخِيهِ لَا يَأْخُذْهُ 
فإنما أقطع له قطعة من النار. He says those. يعني when I make a judgment, I make a decision, and it decides or my verdict, يعني demands that he takes his brother's wealth. In other words, the judgment that I made was based off of something. In actuality, wasn't the case. Everyone saying this. The evidence supported my decision, but in reality, it's unjust. He says, "For that, hold who? Don't take it. Don't take it, because I'm only giving him a slice of the fire. I'm only giving him a piece of the fire." Everyone saying this. You know that the judgment is wrong. But for one reason or another, they rule in your favor. The prophet says what? Still don't take it. Because you've taken the money temporarily, but in the long run, it's only what? It's only what? A slice, a piece of what? Of the fire. What have you been at? وَرَبِعُهَا أَنَّهُ أَبَاحَ مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ وَعَصَمَهُ مِنَ الْمَالِ وَالْدَّمِي وَالْهِرُّ أَنَّهُ He says, وَعَصَمَهُ مِنَ الْمَالِ وَالْدَّمِي وَالْهِرُّ is that he's making lawful what Allah has made unlawful. He's desecrating what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made sacred. Of what? Wealth, blood, and honor. Once again. Allah said that this believer's blood is sacred. Allah said this believer's blood, his believer's wealth is not to be taken. His name is not to be disrespected. And this person comes behind and he does what? He goes against that. وَعَلِيَّةَ بِاللَّهِ وَقَدْ قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَوْ وَقَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ كُلُّ الْمُسْلِمِ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِ حَرَامٌ مَالُهُ وَدَمُهُ وَعِبْدُهُ حديث number one thirty nine the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says the Muslim is protected with regards to his wealth his blood and his honor from his fellow Muslim from his fellow Muslim every Muslim is supposed to feel safe with regards to at least those three things. حديث من مون فوري وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا أنبيكم بأكبر الكبائر على شراك بالله عقوق المالدين على وقول الزور قال فما زال يكررها حتى قلنا ليت وسكت متفق عليه حديث من مون فوري he says I will tell you about the greatest of sins shall I not inform you of them he says شرك with Allah disrespect of one's parents and call a zur, shahadat a zur, the testimony of falsehood, false testimony, bearing witness to something which is a lie, which is untrue, lending your ear to foolishness, and then testifying, giving your sworn oath that it isn't foolishness. As we've mentioned in hadith several times before, it is agreed upon by Bukhari and Muslim, and that's the end of the chapter. That's the end of Major sin number 16. Wallahu ta'ala alam.